In recent months, his supporters have stepped up their actions all over the country and made their voices heard. According to them, it is about making as many people as possible aware of the supposed injustice suffered by Amir Ben Uliel, who they regard as, quote, an innocent Jew who has been languishing in Israeli jails for almost eight years. A conference in support of Ben Uliel was organized in this reception room in downtown Jerusalem by the organization Justice for Amiram, which has a few hundred members. We believe that Amiram is innocent. We're even convinced that he did not commit the acts for which he is tried. His confession was obtained under torture, without the slightest proof. Not to mention the fact that he has already been in solitary confinement for eight years in extremely difficult conditions, the most difficult that exist in Israel. And as brothers, we feel bad for him. And that is what makes us act. A year ago, three judges of the Israeli Supreme Court unanimously rejected an appeal lodged by Ben Uliel's defense team. In 2020, after four years of proceedings, Ben Uliel, one of the so-called hilltop youth of extremist settlers, was sentenced by a Jerusalem court to three life sentences plus 20 years for a triple murder in the Palestinian village of Duma in the West Bank. In July 2015, Ali Dawabshe, an 18-month-old baby, was burned alive in his sleep after his house was hit with Molotov cocktails. His father Saad and his mother Riham, also surprised in their sleep, succumbed to their burns a few weeks later. Only Ahmed, the eldest son, then aged four, survived this hate crime. An anti-Palestinian terrorist attack which deeply shocked Israeli society and which at the time was condemned across the entire Israeli political spectrum. But now there are dissenting voices coming from politicians. I, who sit today in the Israeli parliament and who see this injustice, cannot sit idly by. So I'm here today, thank God. I'm also here to explain because the press has made people believe that Amiram was a despicable murderer. Today, Amiram Ben Uliel's supporters want a review of his trial and hope that in the meantime, his conditions of incarceration will be relaxed as quickly as possible. In recent weeks, they can also count on strong new support. Jonathan Pollard, sentenced to life imprisonment in the United States for spying for Israel. I feel close to him. One is because I was kept in a in a dog cage, basically underground, 150 meters underground, three meters by three meters by three meters for seven years. The other association I have with him is due to the fact that, like him, I was accused of a crime I never committed. It's the same with him. We are the only democratic country in the world that allows torture to be used to extract a confession from somebody. Amiram Ben Uliel's confession was indeed obtained by Shin Bet investigators after they had used physical force for one night after three weeks of detention during which the young man, then aged 21, had retained his right to silence. It was the first time the torture has been authorized in Israel during the interrogation of a Jewish suspect. But before finally retracting, Amiram Ben Uliel led investigators to the scene of the attack to reenact the crime, where he revealed certain details that only he could know. That ended up convincing the judges of his guilt during his trial. We expect the state of Israel to say that it was wrong. The state must take its responsibility because it sinned with our son. One thing is certain in any case, if Amiram Ben Uliel's supporters are ever more convinced of his innocence, they are also becoming more and more numerous in Israel. And if you want more great content like that from I-24 News, just hit the subscribe button. It's as easy as that.